Good morning, FlossTube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel about cross-stitch. Every once in a while, I do something else crafty, but today it's cross-stitch, and we have a lot to talk about, so let's get going. Um, if you are new, I want to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play and giving my channel a try. I hope you like what you see. Press subscribe, like, leave comments. I love it all. Thank you so much for being a part of my journey um, or joining my journey and those of you who are returners you are part of my stitching journey and I want to say thank you so much for coming back each week and watching and commenting and doing all the good stuff I just appreciate it so much I did have I have had this question periodically and I did have it a few times last week so I did want to answer I, I you know I always answer your questions down when you ask them but enough people have asked that I wanted to answer it here as well. There's the big debate about 18 count, whether one strand or two strand of floss. I am a two strand floss girl. I really like the full coverage. It's just, yes, the X's don't lay maybe as nice or as flat, but first off, I'm looking at this from a distance. I'm not gonna know the X is flat and my eyes keep seeing <laughs> My eyes keep getting worse anyway. So unless I'm literally with the glasses up and looking up close in person, I can't see the X's anyway. So for me, it's the full coverage that I prefer. If you would like to see somebody who does stitch a lot of 18 count with one strand, I recommend Becca over at Sambri Stitches. She's a lovely person to begin with and does beautiful stitching. So if you're not watching her, you should be watching her anyway. But especially for those who have the question and would like to see it done a different way. And she will some, and she will say, because there are times where she does use two strands for certain colors or parts of a pattern, but she will say that. Otherwise, she generally uses one strand, so it would give you an idea if you'd prefer to go that way. Um, I know it's a debate for 36 count too as well, so I think it's more just your personal preference. Try it both ways. I think sometimes even the fabric makes a difference, whether it's a looser or tighter fabric. And I just, a couple times I've been tempted to try the one strand, but I like the two, so I've just kept with it. So that's that, in a nutshell. <laughs> I do just what I prefer, but if you prefer the other way, I say go for it. Because if that's what look is what you actually like and you want that X to lay perfectly flat. I have definitely heard people say with the one strand, you can really get the X's to lay a lot nicer. So that's that. All right. I have a finish. You knew it was coming. I was really, really close. So I barreled through and got it done. This is a pattern from Vintage Needle Arts and it's Brunch at Buttonwood Farm. This is number one in a series of four. As far as I know, I don't know if she has any plans to make any more. Now, you know the great debate. I kept messing up and calling the cow a he. So thanks to Clothesline Crafts Caroline. I hope it's Caroline. I know people that say Caroline and Carolyn, but I'm gonna go with Caroline. She said that she always thinks of girl cows as Daisy. So we're naming her Daisy. So this is Daisy, and I will now remember to always say she rather than he. And here we go. Look at it. I got all the sunflowers surrounding Daisy all done. And you know my plan is to try to show a little bit more sky than ground whenever I finish out. Not the whole thing, but more just so that it gives that outdoor appearance. So that's what it looks like. I don't I don't necessarily need all four margins to look exactly the same if I'm going for a certain effect or a look. I like doing that when I do my card making is that I definitely sometimes will change up a margin tighter here or there and looser somewhere else just for, just for interest. So I figure I can do the same thing with my cross stitch. This is done on an 18 count Nantucket, Nantucket Sky by Fabrics by Stephanie. One of my favorite dyers. I have... I have several, <laughs> but she is definitely one of the my favorites for fabric. 
I really enjoy stitching on her fabrics. She is running at about a 10 to 12 week delay, but she's very open and honest about that. And I figure if I wanna order, I just order ahead of time. So that's Daisy. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to finish her up yet, but I really enjoyed stitching her. And I have number two and number three in the series, so I may pick them up at some point, but I think for now, the farm is getting put away, the sunflower farm is being put away, and uh, I'll address her down the line. Now it's holiday stuff, right? Fall and holiday and all that good stuff. So that is gonna be a, part, a good part of my focus moving forward. That's the finish. Now I have one, two, three, four whips to show you, works in progress, and then I have a new start because when don't I have a new start, it feels like lately. <laughs> so this first one is a bunch of littles. So it's kind of like every time I do one, I get a little bit of a finish and then I get a new start. Happy, happy, no, it's Halloween calendar. I kept seeing the happy Halloween from that. Halloween calendar from Tiny Modernist. I'm doing everything separately, including the top. Although, if I make this a banner, I won't do the top. I had originally thought of doing the top part as like a tree topper and doing a Halloween tree, which may still happen, I'm not sure. But my other thought is to do each one separately and somehow make a banner out of them. That's the logistics I haven't figured out yet. But So I am using three different fabrics for this and I'm going to alternate and I did the first four on a piece I I, I didn't really give myself a lot of margins I, I like to not waste fabric <laughs> so I definitely cut it close but I, these are going to be made into small whether it's an ornament or a banner they're, they're, they're small anyway there's no border um, so I figured I'd do these four and then I'm going to move on to the next color of fabric when I get these four done so I've been rotating one, four, seven, and then 10. And last week, or this past week, I finished number seven, which is a trick or treat. And then I started number 10, and this is what 10 is going to look like right here. Now I did a lot of the white and ecru, I think it was white and ecru so far. So. Yes, I, I can see it, and I can see it even in person, so I'm not worried, but there is all sorts of things around it that are color, so it will pop up. Now, this first set of four is being done on Haunting, 18 Count by Fabrics by Stephanie. So it has a little bit of a purplish tint to the gray with some white modeling, but subtle. And I think then I'm going to do kind of the denim-ish blue one and then the dark gray um, and rotate them that way but uh, that's that's the first set of how they look lots of fun there is I mean this guy had a lot of color changes and this had a decent number because the, the word treat is in a couple different colors and so you'd think that these would stitch up faster but they definitely have a decent amount in each section to work on so I have been kind of finishing one and starting another and getting halfway through each week so I think that's probably what will continue to happen this won't be done for this year I, come October 31st around Halloween I I might be traveling back and forth because there'll be house stuff so I don't even know how much decorating because where would I decorate I don't know if I'll have the other house I'll still have this one obviously but I don't know what I'm doing. So this is for 2021. <laughs> I give myself long-term goals, but that's, that's a lot of fun and I'm really enjoying that one. And again, the little tiny finishes give you like a little sense of, yay, I did a, I did a finish and then I can do a new start almost type of thing. This one is very close to a finish. I think next week I can have it done. I'm pulling out my Christmas pieces that I started either for Mania or for Christmas in July to try to get a few finished before I start start starting new Christmas stuff with December coming on us. This one is from Stitching with the Housewives and it's Jolly St. Nick and Rudolph. I did not use the black fabric 
I have no problem stitching on black. I can see I can see the holes, but I just I liked shaking up some of these patterns with colors. And this one I did. This one is a nice bright blue. It is April Showers. I had to stop and think. April Showers from Be Stitch Me over Brandy over at Be Stitch Me. I actually I really like this blue. I just I just you'll see I, I did order some more. I'm debating on the Brooks Books ornaments, whether or not they go on this. I have to see. So I figured I'd pick up some more. So really all I have left is down here on this side. Now it does say the word jo jolly. It says the word jolly, but you know the housewives generally use a 28 count. So it's very easy to do that backstitch wording, whereas I'm on an 18 count. Somebody did have a brilliant idea of doing some sort of either button or I could see a charm or something maybe Rudolph Rudolph has his little hands right there so it might be cute if I have something where it looks like he's holding it if I can find the right thing if worse comes to worse it's just a, a plain white mug we actually have a whole set of those from Crate and Barrel just plain white coffee mugs so <laughs> it would fit right into my decor but yeah so close I did have a mistake so Santa's supposed to have plaid cuffs, if you see. You know, he's got little plaid everywhere on his, on his clothes. And I had done the plaid cuff over here. No, here. And then I realized, oh no, I had just done red there. Well, it looked kind of silly with one plaid cuff and one knot. And it was a lot easier. The red I had just stitched. I, I don't even know how much I'd have to pull out and wear. So I said, you know what? The cuff is coming out and I don't think you'll even notice he's got he's got here and down here so even up at his neckline so the fact that his arms don't have any doesn't bother me so my goal is to get this one finished really I've, I've got the present done so it's it's really just this greenery right here and then I think another light I did the red light so I just have another light so this is a definite goal of mine this week is to get this one finished. So hopefully next week I'll have a finish to show you. All right, that's the Halloween Christmassy stuff. Then I have a couple ongoing that are non-holiday. Silver Creek Samplers and Coastal Cola. I am really enjoying this one. I am also changing up the color on this and I went a little bit brighter. I thought it would just give it a, a nice beachy feel and someone had mentioned that it gives it kind of a nostalgic feel with the colors against this and I, I agree I really like that and I like that idea of nostalgic beach you know idea boardwalk the whole bit so I did not get as much done as I was hoping on this one this one is done on 18 count butter from hand dyed happiness I kind of had a physical the day that this was slated to be worked on. And I said, okay, you know, I'm gonna get stuck sitting in the car waiting. And then of course he's 17. He doesn't want his mother. I had to be there for, for part of the thing. And then I left and you go sit in the car. So I said, oh, I'll bring this and I'll get some good car stitching done. Well, I brought it and my floss and my scissors, but the needle, I didn't have a needle with me. And I've done this before. I'm, I think I've, I've got a plan of, I'm going to make a, a create a, a needle tin and that's gonna stay in the car at all times <laughs> so that when I have car stitching, I will always have a needle because multiple times I have been out and I've had everything but a needle. <laughs> so that's gonna change. I have to find, I have tins. They are, they're basically Altoid tins but they are just all silver. Um, and not repurposed although I oh, we don't really use Altoids anymore but I could have repurposed an Altoid tin as well and I think I'm gonna do something that's a perfect size maybe stick a, a needle minder in there anybody have any good places for travel needle needle, needle minders if it's gonna be in the car maybe that might be kind of cute so that the, the needles will have something to stick to and maybe even a scissors I'm not sure so that I really would be all prepared but I did I, I wanted to finish the whole word coastal I didn't quite uh, so <laughs> I did the T and then I kind of 
the way the A was starting, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm taking a little leap of faith that I've counted everything right. And I did the L first and then worked my way backwards. But it is going to line up the way it's supposed to. I also got distracted and I worked on the cola bottle. So that took a lot of my time as well. But it looks super cute now. So yeah, I will get back to the full coverage -y part. My one dilemma is one of the blues down here is not, there's no DMC equivalent. Well, they don't list DMC equivalents in this chart. I had to figure it out myself, but there is no DMC equivalent on any of the online charts. So I had to look online and then I think I pulled a bunch of different blues that might work as well. So I've been kind of putting that off because I, I, I don't 100% know what color I'm gonna do yet, but I gotta buckle down and, and get that worked out. Because once I figure it out, then I can just keep at it with the stitching. So that's Coastal Cola. And I have one more whip to show you. I need to pull up the picture on the iPad because this is a digital pattern. You, I sang the praises last week of Julie, a Kansas City girl in a Colorado world. She is hemlock and rye stitchery. And that is a site on Gumroad, which I will link below. And I am stitching the Nantucket Trio. I, now I'm currently working on this one. My color is different, but I'm cool with it. it. It definitely reminds me, gives me that vibe. You know that I'm, this reminds me so much of Newport. So it's giving me the Newport vibe, even though these are Nantucket. So it's gonna be this one in a row, then I'm gonna do this one, I believe, and then this one's gonna be in the end. And that's how they're gonna, going to be. This one is done on Nantucket Sky by Fabric by Stephanie. And I worked on it. I was gonna work on it on Saturday and switch out and I was enjoying it so much that I just kept going on Sunday. So it was my entire weekend project. And there we are. It's a house, but I am loving it. I am not upset about stitching a house at all when I'm working on this. So this is the whole piece. All three will be together. I am stitching this uh, with Deborah. She is sand and ocean girl on Instagram. And she made a hashtag for the sal. It's hashtag Nantucket Trio Sal. I know some of you have thought about jumping on board stitching this. So hashtag it with that hashtag so that Deborah and I can see your progress too. Her and I are doing the same three in a row and she came up with the brilliant pattern of connecting the fences in front of each one. So it'll be one long row. Cause you know how I talked about wanting to connect it somehow with some sort of sidewalk or something to complete the idea I have in my head of the memory. And that really wasn't gonna work. And when she mentioned about connecting the fences, I said, you're brilliant. And that's what I'm doing too. This is done in all DMC. It is mostly charted in DMC with a couple fancy flosses, but Julie does provide fantastic alternatives and she gives two colors to blend a strand of each in, case, in, in lieu of the fancy floss if you don't have it or don't use it. So that's super helpful. So I'm loving, loving this and this may become a weekend stitch, we'll see. I think I'll pick it up tomorrow and see how I'm feeling with it and how far I get. Weekends I don't get as much stitching done. Even though my husband works from home, he's working remotely, during the week he's up in the room that's designated as his office and I don't see him that much, but he's coming and going on the weekends. <laughs> and I never get any anywhere near as much stitching on the weekends done as I do during a weekday. Um, and it's not even like we have to go out and run a ton of errands because we're not really going places. <laughs> so, <laughs> But that's, that's, I am just loving it. Love, love, loving it. Really pleased with the start of it so far. And join us, join us if you want and um, check out Deborah's progress too on Instagram. Cause she, it's so cool. She did different parts of it in a different way than I did. So you can see it coming together and coming to life in different ways, which is so fun to see. And those are my whips. I have one new start. I have, I, I had slated this one as a start and I hemmed and hawed about the fabric. It's hands on design. Let's talk autumn. Oh, I was calling it something else. It's 
Let's Talk Autumn. <laughs> and I had seen somebody on Facebook stitch this on. She called it Toast Ada that she had gotten at Joanne's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby. I don't know where she had gotten it. But I really, really loved it. It was like a gingerbread color. And I said, I really want to do it in that. I've seen a lot of people do it on gray, especially Brandy's uh, Stitch Me's Dirty Chalkboard, and it looks fabulous. So if you are a little bit intimidated by black, or you don't want the starkness of the black, try that, that gray. I may have something to show you today. So it, it really, it picks up the colors nicely with that kind of chalkboard effect without being just so stark. But I wanted to do something more like the gingerbread -y, and I thought I had something, and it was a little bit too light, and then I hemmed and hawed, and I said, could I tea dye some? And I was thinking about the different types of tea, tea bags that I could pick from, because I'm a tea drinker. And then Thursday morning, which is when I started this, I went through, and I pulled out my fabrics that I have in stash, and I said, ooh, this one will look nice, so this is why I buy fabric ahead of time because I was able to find something that I like. It veered from the gingerbread route, but I'm okay with that. And this is where we have, we have a start. So this is what I chose fabric wise. So again, like I said, it's going to be completely different than the gingerbread route, which is gorgeous. I can't remember which group it was in. If you really wanna know, just leave a comment and I'll go look for it. This is Autumn Sunrise from Hand Dyed Happiness. She is still on vacation, but I noticed on her tag here that she has an email. She has her phone number, but I'm not gonna call her. I don't wanna be that, that person. But she does have a straight email, because I had emailed her through the Etsy, and I hadn't gotten a response, but not everybody connects their Etsys. So I might try her regular email, because I love her fabric. And that's the start I got from yesterday. I might have to change a couple of the colors because they might blend in a little bit. I really do like how the different colors work together. So if I don't have to change, I won't. But if I do have to make slight variations, I will. I am love, love, loving this. Really happy that I chose this fabric. I think when it's done, it'll look great. The white showing up nicely, so the words will definitely show up nicely. And it's, it's an autumn piece, so it's going to give that autumn fall, that uh, feel, um, the feel of autumn in the piece whenever it's done, which is what, what I want. So don't be afraid of patterns that maybe are in black. If you have trouble seeing, there are tri obviously tips and tricks to black fabric, but there's nothing to say it has to be stitched on what it's shown at, and it can be in look totally different depending on what your decor is or what you want, even the vibe that you want. So go for it. All right, that's my new start. I really like that. So I'm gonna enjoy working on that this week. Plans, I don't have a choice of fabric yet for Bells of Ireland, which is the Nora Corbett I have, but that would be my goal to start for next week. Thursday is the 24th and my anniversary is the 25th. So that's when I want to start it. I'm gonna go through my fabrics again and see if something jumps out at me. I did, I had a, I'm part of the Michaels program, rewards program, and I had $10 I had to spend and it was gonna expire soon. So I said, you know what, I'm buying a whole bunch of floss. So I got the rest of the floss for that one. So now I have all of them except two that I couldn't find that I will throw out on a whole bunch of fabrics and see what's what's what. So that would be my last September start. And then you know October. October is the hashtag pumpkin birthday sal. Pick anything with a pumpkin. Doesn't have to be Halloween. It can be autumn, can be Halloween, can be Thanksgiving, can be whatever vibe and feel you want. But if it has a pumpkin in it, or even if you're using pumpkin color fabric, I'll take it hashtag it and show me, show me what you're doing. So pumpkin birthday Sal. I am also, I spoke to the head of the Connecticut uh, collective, it's called the Nutmeg Collective of makers and crafters and professionals that create handmade items and sell them, most of the people sell them on craft fairs. 
And because craft fairs didn't happen this year, I am tying in a promotion for the collective in the sense of I'd like to show you what some of the makers of Connecticut are doing and maybe there'll be stuff that you see that you like and why not? It's small business, you know, we've been, the community's been so fantastic trying to keep the cross -stitch community uh, business alive, the business community alive with small businesses and trying to shop small and look for local stores. There's a lot of small businesses out there that need help and many, many, many of the people in this collective would pretty much, I don't know, maybe 40, 45 weekends of the year be at craft fairs and that's how they make their money and pretty much everything, everything has been canceled. I don't know if there's any coming up in the fall in this area. I don't do uh, craft fairs. I may, I've done a few, but I mostly am online. But I know that a quite, a, quite a lot of them, this was a very difficult year and they have such incredibly fantastic stuff. So I'd like to highlight the small business community in Connecticut of makers. And so that's gonna tie in with my sound. So I hope, I'm so excited when people say, this is what I'm stitching for it, and or I've been pulling stuff. I can't wait, I can't wait till October. Super, super excited for it. And that's my plan so far. What patterns I do, it's gonna be a bunch. I'm gonna be, I, I'm, I, I might be, um, you know, have Brenda and the cereal starter. Laura is the cereal starter on that. I might just have to be, <laughs> I might just have to follow her lead and start a whole bunch of things. So that is the October plans as well. Okay, shopping. I have some shopping. I do have some shopping this week. I have a bunch of fabric to show you, and then I did a one, two, three stitch order. The reason I did it actually, partially, was I had seen somebody, and I don't know who it was or where, who had shown some fabric that they had gotten, and I had really paid attention, not fabric for stitching on, but like finishing fabrics. And I'd never paid attention to that, I one, two, three stitch. So I went online, and I just, I said, if I'm gonna order, I'm just gonna order a bunch. It's tough to see color-wise, and I tried to pull out some of my finishes, especially for my mom, because I wanna start getting those done. So some of the colors, they go more for that than anything else. Um, but this is what I have. So these are all fat quarters, and some of them, there was some from Hoffman. Let me see if I can find them over here. They were actually, I think like a dollar seventy for a fat water, so not too expensive. Nothing was more expensive than two seventy. Um, my favorite. This is a Riley Blake. Look at this red. Look at this red. I love this. I got this for the December cottage that I finished for my mom, and I think I'm gonna like finishing a bunch of things with this red. So so pretty. So yeah. So there were several that were on sale. And those Hoffman ones were on sale. That was a sale price on those. And just a whole bunch. So if you're looking for some finishing fabric and you're not really going out like I'm not, and you don't want to buy a yard of things, there are lots of places to choose from. And I know there's a lot of Etsy shops that are also great to frequent. But this was just an option um, to think about, especially if you're going to order anything cross stitchy related. So those are fabrics. I looked at the charts, I didn't get that many. I just picked up a couple Prairie Schoolers looking for Christmas. Because I've just gotten back to cross stitch last year, I don't have a lot of the stuff that many of you have been stitching. And one was the 2018 Santa, so I got that. And I got the 2010 Santa. I really liked the one I did for this year, so I thought I would continue doing them. And yeah, so that was that. And they're not, you know, they're not, Elab too elaborate, but they're cute. So I picked those up. Then I don't remember who, I am so sorry, I meant to look up. Somebody had asked about the Brooks books and said that instead of stitching the border, she had seen a recommendation to use this Threadworks um, variegated and do the borders in that way, which means each one would be slightly different, which would be kind of cute. So I picked that up. I have no idea how to use it. I have no idea what I'm doing. I might be asking for advice. <laughs> and then while I was there, I also picked up kind of a autumny pumpkiny color, possibly because you may see this color later on in a future giveaway. And I have not used any sulkies. I love how Brie uses them from Brie Stitching Stuff. 
and I've just been so tempted to at least buy them. I don't know what I'm using them for. So I picked up one that was an autumn kind of a variegated and one that's a salad. And again, you may see something that like looks just like these later on a few weeks down the line as a giveaway. So there's a little, a little hint, spoilerish. Then I have some actual stitching fabric. I have got to be the last person on earth to show my August fabric of the month from Coloring Cotton. I got it literally Friday afternoon after I had videotaped. So most of you have seen it. If you haven't, if you're like me and you get it late, close your eyes for a minute, but I get the any color. So I, I they switch. So they switch between a neutral and um, a color. And I got the color, which is beautiful. Again, look at how nice with the harvest. If so, if I had different pieces, they could work really well in some sort of uh, display. So love, love, love that color. It's definitely a peachy, but you could definitely do autumn on that. So my pumpkins could look good on that. Then I placed an order with Bestitch Me uh, just to try out a few different colors that I didn't have. And while I was at it, I picked up some more April showers. These are all 18 counts so that you can tell from the, the colors. Obviously, even weave usually, doesn't it? It dyes a little bit lighter. So this is what an 18 count Ada color would look like in these. This is April showers. I did pick up because everybody is raving about the dirty chalkboard. So I picked some up. Look at that gray. So look at how pretty that would be if you do not want to do a chalkboard color, like a black, but you wanted to do something that was along those lines. It's a really gorgeous gray. So I'm happy I picked that up. This one is called Lemon. It's a newer color that she had created to go with a sal. I'm not doing the sal, but I thought a nice pretty light yellow could definitely come in handy and then this I believe I saw only when I it wasn't that long after I placed the order before I placed the order that she had put this on and this is called Huckleberry so it's a newer it's not brand new but it's newer to her line and it's a lighter purple really really like it I think she has one that might be even a little bit lighter than this one and then she has darker so definitely could see Halloween on here, along with all sorts of other things. But if I wanted to do something that was a little bit more of a subtle purple, this could be it. And then I actually got the post office, good on them. This was shipped on Tuesday from, is it Brandy's in Illinois, I think? I got it on Thursday, so two days. So the post office kicked butt on this order. Um, usually I don't get it until like Monday or Tuesday of the following week. So I don't even know if there's a spoiler a thing. If you get the fabric of the month from Brandy Bestitch Me, I am in the standard club, which means I get colors. If you're a neutral, if you get straight neutrals, you're gonna get something totally different. If you picked any color, I don't know what she's sending you. So turn away if you don't wanna see. Turn away if you're in the standard and you don't wanna see. I'm not even gonna say the name. I'm just gonna show you guys the tag so you can see it. It's so pretty. It is for September. These dyers were thinking, they were thinking, uh, they were thinking September. So, okay, you've turned away. You're not looking. You're not looking if you don't want to be surprised. Here we are. This is it. This is an 18 count. That's what it's called, which is kind of fun too. And that's what it looks like. Okay, I've just put it away. So if you would like to be surprised, you can look back. It's funny. I'm not a... I don't, I, maybe in theory I like surprises, but I, I also don't mind knowing ahead of time. Like when they do the spoiler threads uh, on the different fabric places, like with this one, I, I look, I, even though I haven't gotten it, I don't, I don't mind. I'm not one of those that loves, 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 loves surprises. I don't mind them, but I don't mind knowing either. I kind of like to know what to expect. The only other thing I have to show you for shopping. Now these would work for, they would work for the pumpkin sow if you wanna do Halloween. If you don't, they're not your, your jam. This is from a Etsy shop, so they're digitals, Primrose Cottages. And this one's, she has three in the series. 
This one is called All Hallows Eve. How cute is that? Each one is only $4. So if you were looking for a digital pattern that wasn't gonna break the bank, trick or treat, super cute. And the last in the series of three was Eek Boo Shriek. And that's what that one looks like. Of course I had to get all three. Cause I'm thinking if I make a banner out of the other Halloween stuff, I still want a Halloween tree or I could have two Halloween trees. And then because I was shopping there, she has one Christmassy one that was super cute, the same size. And it's called Jingle All the Way. So I will link her down below. It's called Primrose Cottages. Ironically, it's Primrose Cottages Quilts, I think is her tagline. She has a lot of fabric. So I think I might have first gone there because I had searched in Etsy for fabric. And then I saw these patterns and I was, I was hooked. So I did pick those up and I would like to possibly stitch them because you know, I'm just gonna stitch everything, everything pumpkin in October. <laughs> and that's it for the shopping, that's all. The only other thing we have to talk about is giveaways. And I have a lot of giveaway stuff to talk about. So this is gonna be a long video. Sorry if you don't like long videos. Um, but hey, I have a lot to talk about. I double checked, double checked before, literally the second before I came out here to film and the winner of this Prim Village pattern had not gotten back to me. I asked it to contact me within two weeks of when I pick a name and if you, I haven't heard from you, I'm repicking. I've gotta move stuff out. Eventually this house is gonna to have to be cleared out. I'm not gonna keep holding, especially with my pumpkin salad coming up. That there might be a giveaway every week is all I'm saying. So there's no way I'm gonna carry X amount of giveaways through the house. So this is what it looks like, Prim Village. You've Most of you have seen it. I do have the charm that comes with it. The charm actually, it's coming out of the bag because it's so, it's, it's solid. It's a heavy solid charm that it actually ripped to the bottom of the bag. <laughs> but it's there, everything is in good condition. I never even actually used the charm so that's brand new. So my new winner, and I ask uh, that you be 18 or older, you know the rules. Um, I ask that you, oh, I'll tell the rules when I do the other giveaway. Um, I ask that you either contact me through my Gmail, send me your name and address, and or you can DM me on Instagram. And both of those, the Gmail address and the, the Instagram account, because it's called Paper Laura, it's different, because that was created much more when I was doing the paper crafting. Um, they're both listed below. I have, have at it, whichever one you wanna contact me at. So the new winner from Prim Village is, who do we have? Lynn Lone Star Stitcher. So Lynn, you have won the Prim Village, Lynn Lone Star Stitcher. I would need to hear from you within the next two weeks. If you contact me this weekend, I have an order I have to ship out for my Etsy shop on Monday. So I am going to the post office Monday. So if I hear from you this weekend, you will get this shipped out on Monday to you. So Lynn, Lone Star Stitcher. <laughs> I didn't wanna get it wrong after that. So that is the repull on the Prim Villages. Then last week, I was giving away Peter Pumpkin from Imaginating. And I asked you guys what your birthdays were. I had every month except December. That was the only month that wasn't represented in the giveaway people. And the person that is going to get Peter Pumpkin is, who's this? Evergreen Stitcher. Yay! And you are a January birthday. So Evergreen Stitcher, if you could contact me and get me your information, I will ship that out to you. That is for that one. Then I do have a giveaway for this week. And this is when I'll do the giveaway rules. Please be 18 and older. Please don't say giveaway or free because then I'd have to delete, delete your comment. Please um, think about, if you're not a subscriber, please think about subscribing. I would really love it if you were a subscriber. And what else? This one is not sponsored by anybody. It's sponsored by me. Um, there is no sponsor. And 
This one is a brand new chart out there. It's from Stitching with the Housewives and it's Boo to You. I think this is adorable. Love it, love it, love it. This one is all pumpkin-y. It is Halloween though, so if you're not a Halloween stitcher, but super cute. So that is the giveaway for this week. And my question to you, since we are jumping into our pumpkin plans is, for me, pumpkin pie is my favorite type of pie. Do you like pumpkin pie, yes or no? Is it your favorite, yes or no? If it's not, tell me what is, because I'm just curious. And if you are not a pie person, that's cool too. Just be like, mm, no, no, just don't like pies. So that is the question for this. And I may, going forward, because you know I like to ask questions that I get to know you guys about, but not everybody wants to enter the giveaway. But I'd love to hear your answers too. So going, I have to think about it, but I don't know if I would have you say a keyword as well as answer the question, just so I know that you want, you know what, let's do that. In order to be entered into the giveaway, answer the pie question and use the word boo somewhere. Okay, use the word boo. If you don't want to enter the giveaway, but you want to answer the pie question, go for it because I love learning about you guys and I'm trying to think about different things and different questions that I could come up with that some of them, it's silly. Are you a pie person? But you know, it's just a little way for us to get to know each other a little bit more. So say the word boo and answer the question if you would like to be entered into the giveaway for the boo to you pattern. And I will ch choose a name on my next video. So that's it. That's all the giveaway business. Other than that, life. Um, shamrock, shamrock, shamrock. Little shamrock. Last weekend he was frolicking outside. We do not have the flattest of yards, sadly. Um, and he twisted his knee. He has done this before. It's a little dog. They tell us it's a little dog um, ailment and he's 10. So uh, he twisted his back knee. I can't remember if it's the same knee. I'd have to go back and look if it's the same knee as last time. It was a back knee, but I don't remember if it was the same leg. There's nothing they did for him the first time, nothing they're doing for him the second. He, he's happy, his tail has been wagging from the get-go. If he wants to run, he runs three-legged. Otherwise, if he's a little bit more sedate, he, is, he limps with it. The biggest thing they had told us was to keep him off of it. He's a dog, we do the best I can. He likes to sleep, so we encourage that. If I'm stitching, I put him in the room with me wherever I am and he just lays down somewhere while I'm stitching. But he's a dog, he wants to jump up and be happy to see us and he wants to run when his food is ready and he wants to do all these things. So we are trying to keep him as quiet as we possibly can. Remember that ad? I, I don't know if it was an Amazon ad, but it was a little little doggy, same kind of size as Shamrock, and he had, I think he had like a little cast on his leg, which they're not gonna do for him. And the doggy would look longingly at all the other dogs that could run and frolic. And it was one of those like, it's like a baby carrier, but for dogs. <laughs> and then he had the dog right in front, and the dog was like wagging and happy and other things because he could be moving around. So I always laugh and I think that I should get one of those for Shamrock so that, because I could take him for a walk and I wouldn't be hurting his leg. So <laughs> that would be a picture. If I ever, ever did it, I would show you guys that one. Um, other than that, um, if you could keep Megan in your thoughts, she's dealing with some difficult stuff at school. I'm really proud of her. She is coming into her own as a person and standing up for herself and she knows that she's in the right, even if she's kind of going uphill battle with something, but if you could keep her in her thoughts, that your thoughts, that would be great. But I have to say, you know, you send them off and she's 19 and, and it's that in-between age and she's, she's, gonna be a, she's gonna be a pretty cool adult. She's gonna be a good one. She's gonna be a good one. So I'm really proud of her. And I'm proud of what she's, how she's standing up for herself and her integrity. Um, just I am, so. Just any thoughts would be appreciated there. Other than that, um, we have lights and we have solar in our house right now. They put on the solar panels and they put in some lighting. So that's that's where it stands with that. Things are still, I guess, working okay. There have been not huge delays in getting product. So 
I might be on the road a bit in October. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. Other than that, that's about it. I'm going to do my stitching this weekend. Nantucket Trio Sal. And at some point, <laughs> I've got to start finding fabric for all these patterns that I want to start in October for my pumpkin birthday sal. But join me in either one of them. I hope you do. I'm not sure when I'm going to start promoting the small businesses. Maybe next week. We'll see. And that's, that's, that's all I got. I hope you are well. I hope you are getting in some stitching time. Um, I hope it is, well, for those of you on the West Coast, I hope you are safe. I hope uh, you're in a spot that is safe. I'm thinking about you. I hope that there's more rain that may help. We're getting cold here this weekend. I think it's supposed to get down to 40 overnight. I, I just, I hope that everything gets under control. I am thinking about you. Um, and I hope the air quality if not, is better, getting better, um, so you're able to breathe outside and be outside. But I just hope everyone is well. Um, and that's about it. So until next time, my stitchy friends, Happy stitching.